the MacBook Air. No, not the M1 we just got. Best bang for the performance efficiency buck, though it may well be, but the M2 redesign we all still want. The smaller, better, faster, longer, lasting model that might, just might, be as colorful as the all new iMac. Yeah, spoilers. I'm Renee Ritchie, welcome to the channel. Thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring, let's do this. John Prosser, just a couple days ago, the same source that gave information regarding the color options for the 2021 iMac, which turned out to be true, has seen a colored MacBook prototype in blue that looked absolutely amazing. If accurate, the absolute unfunnest take on this is that it could just be an extra MacBook Air color, just like we've gotten gold, rose gold, or copper gold, basically pink, for the last few years, just like we got a midnight green and Pacific blue version of the iPhone Pro. But the super happy fun times take is that Apple could be going on a full on Skittles taste the rainbow bent with the MacBook line, like they just did with the M1 iMac and have been doing for a while with iPhones and basically forever with the iPods, just like they did with the iBooks that followed the original, they come in colors, paint me like one of your fruit gears iMacs. And Yes, with matching off-white bezels, of course, because it's still the 2020s and we just can't ever have 100% nice things. This actually makes the kind of sense that does to me though, because it matches the retro future chic design language kicked off with the iPad Pro, makes color once again a consistent key to the consumer lineup, like with the new iMac, adds an extra layer of differentiation, and after a decade of all shades of bead blasted aluminum gray, it really pops, like magnitude pop pops. A few months ago, TFI Security's Guo Mingqi, we expect that the new MacBook Air will adopt mini LED in 2020, increasing MacBook's mini LED adoption rate. In contrast, only high-end iPad models will use mini LED displays. And if this is accurate, then it means Apple will be pushing mini LED across the MacBook lineup just way, way faster than they will the iPad lineup, which is, Strange, but interesting, strangely interesting. And it could be as simple as OLED going into the smaller iPad displays, or Apple could be thinking the higher MacBook price points can better absorb the $100 bump mini LED currently comes with. Or wildcard, it could be that we're not actually talking about a MacBook Air at all, at least not as we currently define it as ultra portable and less expensive, but something else. Back on January 25th, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, the new MacBook Air is planned to be released during the second half of this year at the earliest or in 2022. It will include Apple's MagSafe charging technology and a next generation version of the company's in-house Mac processors. Some people have recently been talking about an M1X MacBook Air, which makes the kind of sense that absolutely doesn't. The X means extended with more performance cores and more graphics cores and the added heat and power draw that come with both those things. And that's perfect for higher end MacBooks Pro that have the added chassis size and battery capacity to make up for it. But it is the exact opposite of what anyone would want in a fanless, ultra low power, ultra portable design. So if Apple holds to pattern, it's much, much more likely to be the actual next generation, as in next generation silicon IP and architecture, the M2. In other words, the next ultra low power chipset, basically the A15 from the upcoming iPhone 12S with four performance cores and up to eight graphics cores, probably around 20% faster for single core workloads, 30% faster or more for graphics. And that would slot in above and eventually replace the M1. And then the M2X would slot in above and eventually replace the M1X. Again, if Apple holds to pattern, which they absolutely always do, just exactly up until they don't. Mark Gurman again. Apple has discussed making the laptop smaller by shrinking the border around the screen, which will remain 13 inches. And so that would be like the 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro, where the display stayed exactly the same and Apple just Thanos snapped the bezels in half. Basically the opposite of what they did with the 11 inch iPad Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But in this case, I really do think smaller is better because it could make it much less like the current MacBook Air and much more like the 2015 MacBook nothing. And even better performing, but even lighter ultralight, which would slide in above the current MacBook Air at a premium price, sure, but pay down that M2 and mini LED display, at least at first. Mark Gurman again. 
The new laptop is destined to be a higher end version of the current MacBook Air, which is expected to remain in the company's lineup as an entry level offering. And yes, yes, exactly this. Kind of what Apple's been doing with the ultralight lineup for a while. Intro price them high, but then let them drop down again to that sweet, sweet 999 price point once they're paid down, except for that 2015 MacBook nothing, which Apple just never figured out how to price drop. So they just totally dropped, canceled, like Justin Long from the Apple Christmas card list. But the M1 MacBook Air, which easily, easily has a few years of headroom on it, at the very least, fits this perfectly. Maybe even to the point where it can drop to 899 without the education discount or further. And Apple can start applying their iPad strategy to the Mac lineup. Use the higher end devices to pay down and push down technology to ever more affordable, ever more affordable for Apple, entry-level models. Like what's the 329 iPad or 399 iPhone SE for the Mac, if not eventually this. Now, there is something that worries me about all of this, but it's a real tangent into the purposes, the meanings behind nostalgia marketing. So I'm gonna save that for the nebula cut of this video because that's where I don't have to worry about YouTube's view durations or retention or views per viewer or any of that. And it's where I can post all of my videos ad-free, sponsor-free with, yeah, many of them having extended bonus content, sometimes two or three times as long as the YouTube versions of the videos for things like the event reactions, the interviews, the explainers. And you can get a Nebula subscription for free as part of a bundle when you sign up to curiositystream.com slash Richie or just click the link in the description. And right now, Curiosity Stream is 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, less than the price of one fancy pizza a year for access to their thousands of amazing documentaries and series like Ticket to the Future, The Evolution of Travel, as well as all the ad-free and often extended videos on Nebula from Legal Eagle, Jordan Harrod, Ali Abdal, Real Science, and MKBHD. For over 26% off, less than $15 a year, just click the link in the description or go to crossystream.com slash Richie. It really helps out this channel. Hit the playlist above for more on the upcoming M1X and M2 Max and what the difference really is between the two. Just hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.